Hello, welcome back to Family Art Project's Depth and Distance series. Happy Pride! Today, we're celebrating pride by looking at ways nature teaches us about querying the spaces around us. Specifically, we'll be looking at adaptations of flowers that attract pollinators, as well as weeds, to learn how these plants survive and thrive. We'll look at these plants' adaptations, anatomy, and general ways of being, and name these as the skills, values, and behaviors that we can take on to queer our spaces. Let's start with a walk among the flowers and define queerness. Historically, queer was a word that referred to something as odd or strange. However, the word has been reclaimed, that means taken back, to be inclusive, which means inviting of ideas and people to learn and create together. The act of queering something then is about taking the time to sit and reflect, get real curious, ask questions, and then do the work of expanding, that is creating more space for and allowing a whole spectrum of unimaginable visions by giving space for changes and shifts and big possibility. Of course, this reclaiming comes from the work of LGBTQ people, that is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer. Do you know what each of those terms means? Take time to discuss with your family. Very often when we look at the LGBTQ movement, we see the struggle that queer people have shown up for when they were unaccepted. We look at our history of events like the Stonewall Uprising, which was a series of protests from the LGBT community when police were being violent specifically towards gay individuals. But even in this struggle, queerness is about joy. Seeing these hydrangeas here being pollinated by bees has me noticing the clusters of colorful blue and purple florets that call out to pollinators like the bees. Just by showing up as bright and with each other, these florets, florets get what they need to expand. The magnolia flower here has a special history. The magnolia tree evolved before pollinators like bees and hummingbirds, so had to rely on beetles to pollinate. However, beetles can do a lot of damage to the plant they feed from. Magnolias adapted by hardening their carpels. Carpels are the female reproduction part of the plant. Basically, they're the part of the plant that creates new life. How are you, like the magnolia, able to be strong and sturdy when your heart hurts? How can you queer the space around you by staying a magnificent flower while still staying strong? Meet Mullen. Mullen is considered a weed, but flowers in such a brilliant way. Mullen never flowers all at once. It flowers slowly from the bottom up so that it can be pollinated for longer in the season. How do you take your time so that you can get what you need to thrive at your own pace? There are so many ways that flowers can teach us about queering. Just by showing up as their bright, bold, unapologetic selves, these flowers thrive and have beautiful connection with pollinators. These flowers get what they need, but they also give to pollinators. They give to the butterflies, moths, bats, hummingbirds, bees. What flowers do you love? What do you think they are telling you through their way of being? Let's begin the art. So to create your monoprint, you're going to take a printing plate, which you can create a printing plate out of any sheet of plastic or glass. Uh, where you can find these is sometimes an old picture frame, just pop out the front there. Uh, and some kind of illustration or picture of a flower. I'm just using um, these pictures of the pollinators that I've seen that I, um, some drawings, some quick drawings I did. And what I'm going to do is set the drawing down and put the printing plate right over it. And then I'm going to paint directly onto the printing plate. So here we have under the printing plate, a picture I drew of the mullen that we saw earlier. And if you remember, the mullen flowers from the bottom up at different times um, of the season. So what I'll be doing is having some flowers at the bottom that are in full bloom, ready to be pollinated, and some at the top that are less. And what you see 
I am playing around with brush strokes. The more you play, the more paint you put on to the printing plate, the better it will come out because you are going to then put a piece of paper onto the printing plate and make sure that you press down really hard on all the parts that you have painted. So you get all the colors and all the brush strokes show up and you will pull your print. And this is a monoprint. I've decided that I'm going to create seven monoprints for the different colors of the Rainbow to Celebrate Pride. And so you'll see here that I'm just washing off my printing plate using a sponge and water. As you watch me work, you'll see that I am creating unique prints for seven different flowers. I've chosen these flowers based on what they can teach me about showing up in joyful queerness. I've chosen the pink magnolia, a blue iris, an orange daffodil, a red poppy, purple hydrangea, and green ivy. You can make your own unique prints based on the flowers that you love and are listening to. Take a look at a flower and sit with it. What is your flower telling you? What is the weather around the flower? Are there other animals around the flower? How is plant life responding to the flower around the flower? What do you smell? What do you see? What do you hear? There are many ways that a flower teaches you by just way of being. Can you listen to your flower so intently? Now is the time to add pictures of my chosen ancestors. These are people that I look to as role models, teachers, guides, who whose lives and ways of being help me get grounded and act from a place of growth. You'll see June Jordan, a poet who identified as bisexual, placed amongst the ivy, a plant that is one of the first plants to grow in spring, so that early pollinators are welcome. June Jordan speaks of freedom and truth-telling that inspire me, inspires me to show up like her and Ivy. I 
I've placed Audre Lorde with the Mullen, remembering that Audre Lorde teaches me the personal is political and that love is a radical act. Allen Ginsberg is an author whose words ignite my imagination. He reminds me to reach for my inner feather boa, which, he, which is why he is placed in the vibrancy of an iris. Sylvia Rivera is placed amongst the Magnolia because she is a strong and powerful force who co-founded the Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, STAR, a group dedicated to helping homeless young drag queens, gay youth, and trans women. Frida Kahlo is among the Hydrangea because I am reminded how she is so a part of a creative collective of arts movement, so interdependent amongst each other. Gloria Anzaldúa knows what it means to live in the in-between. She pushes back on norms and binaries. Marsha P. Johnson is a fierce transgender woman whose fortitude started the Stonewall uprising. I am so grateful for her bold way of showing up and for shaping a movement. So there we have it. Here are some flowers that attract pollinators in ways that they teach us about queering. Now we'll go to Ryan who's going to look to weeds. Hello everyone. For those of you who have joined us in this video today and for those who have not, happy pride. So we're at the portion of the video where we typically begin the art making activity but before we get too far into it, I want to share a bit about what we're making and give you some context behind it. So here is an image of what we are making today. And what you're looking at is on this image a face blowing into the stem of a flower and on the other side is the white parts of the flower that sits on top that when you blow on it, it blows off into the wind carrying seeds to grow uh, anywhere that it lands. Now what this is called is a dandelion. On the ends of our printed image is rubber bands. If you rotate it really quickly, you'll see the two images on both sides come together as one. And that's called an optical illusion. In our process we're doing what's called monoprinting. And monoprinting means that the process that we print with can produce only one version. It can't be printed the same way again. It's kind of fun to see how many unique different things you can create with model printing. In this project, I used a dandelion as my image that I wanted to create. And the reason is because dandelions are sometimes used as symbols for pride. And there's a very specific reason why. Now, dandelions are often considered weeds. And when we think about weeds and thinking about pride, it brings to my interesting thoughts. Then I have to ask myself, what is a weed? Well, interesting story. When I was a kid, I thought a weed was a family of plants. Because the word was used so commonly with certain kinds of plants, I thought that it meant that that's a family of plants. And as I got older, I realized weeds are just a word to describe something or describe certain kinds of characteristics about and some kinds of plants, things that we do not desire. So some of the characteristics of weeds that we do not desire is that they can grow in spaces that we want to be curated and perfectly lined up and out of nowhere weeds will just grow and we didn't even realize that they were there and that's because of the way weeds oftentimes travel they can blow in the wind like a dandelion and land in spaces that we didn't even realize that that's where they landed and because plants like dandelions and these kinds of weeds can grow in tiny spaces and corners uh, that really don't need much resources for growth like sunlight and water it makes it hard for us to really pull them out and uh, take it out of our gardens or take them out of the spaces 
that we don't want because they're tucked away oftentimes in corners. And even if we take them out, they tend to grow back really quickly. Now, if we reconsider how we think of weeds, because really, again, they're not a family of plants, they're really just descriptions, that means we can probably reconsider what those mean. Some of the characteristics that I thought of when we were just describing weeds was resiliency, strength, and community. They're resilient because in these tiny spaces, even when we pluck them out, they can grow right back really quickly. Also, because they can grow in abundance, that also means community. So right there alone are three different characteristics that sound like strengths to me. They're strong, they're resilient, and they move, they can be in community. To me, that alone makes me think, what if when these kinds of plants grow, we can build our garden around it or turn that space there into something beautiful and add to what's already growing with a dandelion or any other kind of plant that's described as a weed. So in recognition of pride, let's reconsider how we describe weeds and reconsider that definition as well. What acceptance looks like when we accept all the qualities and characteristics in the full spectrum of what weeds brings and what these type of plants provide in nature. The resiliency, the way weeds are so abundant and disperse so wildly, and the way weeds grow together in such community teach us so much about how we can queer our spaces. Remember, queering is a call to action. Caregivers, as Ryan makes his artwork, what conversations with your family would you like to ignite on how we can all work to actively queer spaces around us? Let's look to the dandelion, and in the words of author Adrienne Marie Brown, who is a black queer activist and facilitator, who says, dandelions don't know whether they are a weed or a brilliance, but each seed can create a field of dandelions. We are invited to be that prolific and to return fertility to the soil around us. And thank you so much for joining us on this Depth and Distance project. Please, please, please share your projects with the hashtag Depth in Distance so that we can see your beautiful projects and Ryan and I will continue the conversation over on social media. Thank you.